on to our next album review. Yes. We have Unknown Mortal Orchestra. They have released their new album, Five. This is the project of Ruben Nielsen of New Zealand. New Zealand. This is uh, kind of, this band is a part of the New Zealand, uh, Australia, psych rock revival kind of thing that's been going on for the past Your 10. Your Tampalas and the yes, like. Yes, yeah. of those nature. Um, this is their King fifth Gizzard. album. Uh, they were kind of like a SoundCloudy uh, mm -hmm. band when they came out and got discovered, and they have kind of evolved from there. They've played uh, many a show since. Uh, this is a double album from them and is clocking in at an hour straight. Mm -hmm. Has some instrumental stuff on it. Pretty interesting. What did you guys think of this? Uh, I liked it. I thought it was a good, solid album. I did think it was a bit long, if I'm being completely honest. I think that they could have trimmed quite a bit of fat off of this record. But overall, I enjoyed the textures. I thought the grooves were really good. I thought there were some cool, you know, choices that were made as far as songwriting goes and even as far as, like, the instrumentals go and stuff like that. But I did think it was a little bit bloated. Um, this album is 14 tracks, and it's produced by Ruben. And he sings and he plays all the instruments on maybe like a third or a half of the tracks. And then the other tracks he plays uh, guitar and key type instruments. Um, so it's kind of like a one man band. Uh, his brother, Cody, plays drums or keys on a bunch of the album. Uh, his bass player, Jacob Portrait, only plays bass on like two or three songs. Um, and then I believe his other brother, Chris, plays horns oh, on I, a couple tracks. I, I thought that was his dad. Oh, maybe horns. it's a dad. It, it was his dad played oh, horns cool. on it. Nice. Mm. Yep. Um, so this is kind of the like homespun, like home studio, I assume, type of thing that they've been doing the past decade. Uh, I thought the production was really interesting. I like home recording type stuff. Um, I like like Nilsson from you know the 60s and 70s. This album reminded me very much of an artist called Emmett Rhodes, who's an American artist who had like a run of self-produced albums in the early 70s. And I uh, highly recommend checking that out if you enjoy Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Uh, I liked most of this album. I did actually like the instrumentals too. Um, and because it was a double album and not like, you know, we get a lot of, especially like hip hop albums where it's like, we're putting out an album, it's 26 tracks long. And you're like, yeah. geez. Like this was still 14 tracks. There were just, you know, everything kind of breathed a little bit. Everything, you know, there were a bunch of like five and a half minute long songs. Um, but I really enjoy this. And I, I had no, other than a couple songs given by the algorithm, I had no experience with Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Uh, I'm looking forward to checking out more of their back catalog because I was like really into the songwriting and the style and the production and the mix of the instruments mm -hmm. and stuff, uh, the melodies, some guitar solos. Yeah. Like, yeah. There were definitely some good guitar yeah. solos on this. I, I agree with you too. Like, you know, the... The sound quality of it, I think after like my third listen, I was a little bit like, like a l I got a little bit tired with it where I was like, okay, because it because that was my the main. whole thing kind of ends up just being this big wash of an album overall for me anyway, you know, for me. But that's not to say that I didn't like it. You know what I mean? So like, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to speak for you, but like the production in my sense, like I like the like the core essence of like all these songs i really did i'd like there wasn't like melody i liked like all these songs like the core essence of what they were a lot for me the uh production style made them all sound a little too similar to me mm -hmm. and this is a production style that they kind of been using for mm -hmm. a lot of their records and a lot of their has like this sound to it um so for me i would like some more like fresh air on those like vocals and let mm -hmm. it like breathe and really hear the voice mm -hmm. instead of like that effect um and just like a little more airiness on like the drums a little bit. And maybe that was just it. Um, it's that for me, there's that style kind of like um, I think takes away from how great a lot of these songs really were. Like uh, in, or like yeah. letting them like be like, oh, OK, yeah, it's yeah. not quite lo-fi, but it's it's, it's, yeah, it's homemade towing right. that, towing no, that yeah, line because sure. it doesn't sound like purposely made more distressed and like blown out or f super saturated, like compressed. But it definitely is the like. It's stylized. Yeah, I I enjoyed that a lot. I I felt that this album was like split right in the middle between that Emmett Rhodes type of thing and a current band Bahamas, which is another band I highly recommend checking out if you enjoy Unknown Mortal Orchestra. Um, 
songs. How about some songs mm-hmm. I enjoyed? I, I really liked the song Layla, uh, which was kind of like a lower fi John Mayer type of song. Uh, I really liked the song That Life. Mm. Uh, I love the instrumental mix and the vibe and how the harmonies were and how just things sat in that song. Um, and then Nadia was my maybe my third favorite song, which was kind of this like a little dark kind of, uh, you know, a little transgressive type of subject matter, but it but also like a mid-tempo jam that had like a tar- guitar solo and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Nadia also has that uh, lyric in it about maybe getting a blowjob or not getting a blowjob that will like <laughs> slip right by you. So like check that one out on, on there because uh, it caught my ear and I was like, whoa. Um, so, but that song, you're right, has like, really like kind of like dark it's almost like the b of like uh the layla song earlier where that was right, like right. uh yeah. more like relaxed and groovy mm-hmm. and both of those songs have killer killer guitar solos in them yeah for like modern songs i was like oh this is like a ripping guitar solo i really like this like george harrison style yeah melodic 25 seconds like i was almost yeah. thinking too uh, like some of these songs sounded maybe even like a little bit like doobie brothers michael oh, sure. mcdonald if like that yeah. that like indie mm-hmm. production wasn't on them and yeah. like layla and uh Nadja was those two songs mm-hmm. that i wanted to shout out as maybe having those kind of vibes yeah i like the garden i thought that was a strong album oh, opener dude. if you're speaking about like good guitar solos that's got a great guitar solo in it i also like uh the widow which is the first instrumental track on there oh, yeah the electric piano there's a cool yeah. sort of like track ripple it hiccup thing that they do on there that's really neat and then it like opens up and it gives you like this cool like horn solo thing that was almost sort of reminiscent of like a like a peaches and regalia like a frank zappa e sort of just the twist like just a little sprinkle of like zappa just the taste just the taste just the taste of the zap uh just just his mustache that might have been a clavinet the thing oh, that sounds yeah. like a horn. I think it's like an overdue. Oh, was it a cla- Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, then that goes into another cool song, the Rear View song. Yeah, in the Rear which View. Which is very, yeah. very like Beatlesy, very like yeah. White Album Beatles type of chord progression stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, th- I mean, it's it was it's a solid record, man. It really, I even like I even Drag, which is the album closer. Yeah. I like that too because it's like it's weird because like. What I found that this band can do like really well and really effective is it's sort of like it's sort of like here. And on this side, you've got sort of like the Glastonbury festival type thing happening where it's like, you know, and 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 their contemporaries, your Tim and Paul, your King Gizzards and all that. And then on this side, they've got like the like the Strange Creek uh like Indie. like chil- children yeah, yeah. of children of deadheads sort of right, thing right. and they're somewhere in the middle there because drag kind of gives this sort of deady jam dun, 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 kind dun, of vibe dun, thing yeah. about it um even jeff was talking about um uh what is it yeah and layla because layla even has i think that's the one that has that sort of like islandy sort of mm-hmm. reggae sort of beat that kind of yes. happens underneath it the whole time which i thought was really cool because nothing else about that song has any sort of an island feel really to it except for the drum beat so that was a really cool creative choice that they uh that they made well uh he said when he was writing that song that he wanted to write a reggae song laid down the drums and then was like just started writing over it and he's like nothing else on that track is reggae so he's like when you hear it he's like i wanted somebody to be like oh He's writing a reggae song. Mm. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, and right, because that, that's so, really what my reaction was. Yeah, It was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. This album also had, I wanted to note, the I Killed Captain Cook song had a kind mm. of like telling of his family's story a little bit in that he is of like Hawaiian descent uh, and the story of Captain Cook getting uh, killed by the native Hawaiians. And that song kind of gave tell to that too. So I thought it album was pretty personal in that it gave like a lot of like what he was going through yeah. and then like his family a little bit and his family plays all over his dad mm-hmm. uh plays horns on this so i thought that kind of added in a little bit and gave texture to who he was and that was like pretty big in like this album's press release uh was like talking about those kind of things so yeah. i thought that was uh cool to add to yeah the, the hawaiian maori new zealand type of ethnic background yeah 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 i i liked i killed captain cook too because that was cool it was cool because it was like just the acoustic guitar in him so it was sort of like instrumentally and it it was was like a really good way of him delivering the lyric because like nothing else was really overshadowed by anything instrumentally that was going on i wish that was the closer well it was because they they end with like a six minute 
instrumental jam and then you think vocals are gonna come in but it's just like mm, like yeah. ooh vocals for 20 seconds so i would have loved to see that those two switch yeah, yeah. That been a good i thought it, they mm-hmm. pancaked it to like highlight it but i mm-hmm. think it kind of like distracted from it a little mm-hmm. bit and uh the flip would have been better um so yeah we uh we going for ratings let's go for ratings yeah i was really into this um yeah yeah uh there's at least an eight for me. I'm gonna say it's an eight point five. It's like the perfect album to come out when the time has changed and now it's sunset at seven PM. This is like this is a sixty degree evening, play it at sunset, play it at seven thirty PM type of thing for me. Yeah, yeah I agree. I enjoy this a lot. I'm gonna go with a I'm gonna go with a solid eight on this record too. I, I, I think this is gonna be a regular listen for me on like those hot hot Mm -hmm. summer nights where you're just hanging out you got a cold drink and you're just relaxing you know in your sun porch or wherever you are uh and you just throw this uh throw this record on so i'm gonna go with an eight uh i'm gonna go with a 7.5 i could have used a switch up in the production a little bit on the fifth record and um i also could have used like a little bit of shortening of the instrumental tracks on this record but uh solid throughout i really like this band and uh they're doing great things seven five let's get a quick little input from alex behind the boards alex as the person who probably had the most exposure to this band before yeah um i like unknown mortal orchestra they're really similar to a lot of artists i like um you know beach fossils pond um real estate and uh drug dealer king cruel they're Mm. they have like a lot of that similar vibe to me um, and I heard a lot of these tracks prior because they came out as singles and they're regularly in my rotation. Um, as far as the album goes for rating, I would give it an eight as well. I am really on the same page with you there. Um, but also Luke, to your respect, I do think it could use a little bit more shortening. Mm. The six minute long ending track was a drag to me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ditto bud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it was a good album overall. I, yeah. you know, I don't think it lives up to the album too. But it's uh it's up there. Yeah, that was my exposure to them at first. I, as well I feel as you, too. Alex. That's yeah. uh that's my high. That's my watermark. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you love it? Who knows? Let us know. Um, well, that about does it, guys. Like, uh, comment, subscribe. Like, tell comment, somebody. subscribe. Tell uh tell the carpenter. Tell your local carpenter. <laughs> tell the carpenters. <laughs> tell tell the carpenters. Until next time, guys. This has been Get in the Garage. We'll see you next week. Rest in peace, Karen. <laughs>